must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. Today, in the missile and space age, the seas and sky have shrunk. The tall ship has become a miracle of technological complexity, a Wellsian world of delicate, intricate equipment. Radar, highly technical systems of communication, electronic brains, new and complex weapons. All these make intense demands on the expert team which is the crew of a modern warship, and not least, on those who must service them and maintain them. The Royal Australian Navy trains these skilled hands at HMAS Narimba, a special school at Quakers Hill near Sydney. Young men between 15 and 17 from all over Australia enter the school twice a year to begin five years intensive trade training. general secondary education is also part of the course. In the chemistry lab too, there's further evidence of the qualities that make up the modern sailor. Qualities that fit him as a future officer and leader. There are over 350 apprentices in training at Narimba, which has become a self-contained and many-sided community. Newcomers are quickly introduced to the full, rich and active life. There are practical demonstrations of seamanship, such as the old nautical art of tying a fast knot. And the new chum quickly shows he knows the ropes. Then come lectures on Navy customs and traditions. There's elementary trade training too. All the apprentices begin as fitters, though after six months they'll divide off into their selected trades. Engine room, ordnance or electrical artificers, naval shipwrights or naval aircraft artificers. They're acquiring skills at no cost to their parents, which will ensure their future, both in the Navy and the world of industry outside, though some are a little awkward early on. Physical fitness is a must at Narimba, and the early morning limber up would do credit to a gymnastic team. Every conceivable kind of sport is available, for though the prime object of the course is to train technicians, teaching them to become men is also part of the job. On the subject of making men, the assault course is an infallible test of fitness and fortitude. Go do it, Junior, and show us what you're made of. During their four years at the school, the apprentices grow pretty familiar with this sylvan stretch of scenery. Walking the plank is a popular finish to the exercise, especially in summer. Careful now, Junior. Oops! Thanks, 
thanks to the healthy, well-balanced life, a full-time seamstress puts up a full-time battle to keep the boys from bursting out of their clothes. The social graces, of course, are a fundamental part of life, and Marimba doesn't ignore them. Dances and dancing classes are held regularly. Among the more familiar figures on the station are the religious leaders, and they are popular attenders at these functions. At the heart of this distinctive school is the workshops. Here, engine room artificers are made. From the first clumsy attempts at fitting, apprentices advance in all aspects of fitting and turning and marine engineering. Fully qualified service and civilian instructors supervise the exhaustive training, which is equal to, and in many cases surpasses, the demands of commercial industry. time to time the students will go to sea to gain experience and the fifth year of most apprenticeships is spent at sea. The complex capstan lathe is handled with a confidence and efficiency far exceeding its young operator's years. For apprentice electrical artificers, a wide electric and electronic field is covered, and the Navy knows that in this electronic age, the field is wide indeed. Here, an apprentice endeavors to control the synchronization of a motor generator, while an officer creates power problems. Yet minds are being trained as well as hands. Throughout the course, classwork continues with growing emphasis on technical instruction. In many cases, models are used. From drawing board upwards, they learn the oldest of seagoing trades, that of the naval shipwright. Then again, it's from theory to practice. First, they must master the ancient art of the chippy, and it's not as easy as it looks. These days, modern planing machines make light work of tasks that in the days of the Vikings were many weeks of hard labor. Though the modern ship is of steel, the shipwrights gain valuable experience repairing and rebuilding barges, lighters, ships' boats, and so on. Wonder what the Vikings would have thought of this. They're molding parts from fiberglass. And on the subject of fiberglass, here's the complete shell of a small boat just out of the mold. Now to the paint shop. Here the apprentices express their creative instincts, becoming expert at painting, glazing, polishing, and they dabble a little in heraldry too. An 
another class and another Old Navy trade, Ordnance Artificer. The chart illustrates the breech mechanism of a Bofors gun. And of course from here they transfer to the real thing. A far cry from the guns that skittled the Spanish Armada. The largest individual area at the school is given over to engineering and ordnance. Here, every major working part of a modern ship is installed. Giant diesel engines, turbines, which are in themselves a miracle of engineering. In fact, anything upon which the efficient running of a ship at sea may depend. Senior apprentices carry out complete refitting and timing of specially installed engines. A complete boiler unit from a destroyer with its maze of tubes is something of a nightmare to the new apprentice, but at Marimba, they really get to know the big monster, outside as well as in. Final exams are just around the corner, and with them, the vital passing out test. From a lump of raw material, the senior must prove the value of his training. He's come a long way since those first crude efforts in the basic workshops. Each piece is checked and measured for accuracy by the examiner. But you don't have to be an expert to see that the apprentices have come a long, long way. Some of the finished work receives points for accuracy as high as 99%. This array will take pride of place in a display for parents and friends on passing out day. Passing out day, not an end, but a beginning. Another year at sea or in shore establishments and these skilled young sailor tradesmen will be petty officers. And promotion comes rapidly to the skilled in a world demanding skills. No, not an end, but a beginning. For their families, and the officers whose work and patience are responsible for converting raw recruits into top tradesmen, it's also a big day. Ahead, a life on the ocean wave, the sea waves, the teeming ports of all the world. Artificers of the Royal Australian Navy, who not only know what makes a modern warship tick, but how to make it tick and keep it ticking. Skilled hands at sea. Speed ahead, both engines. Revolutions 300.